Esophageal cancer, there are two distinct subtypes of esophagus cancer, esophageal adenocarcinoma and esophageal squamous cell cancer. Historically, we've known that these tumors are very distinct and they have distinct uh, risk factors and biologic behavior. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, historically also, these uh, patients used to be uh, put together in similar clinical trials. As the field has evolved, we know that squamous cell of the esophagus molecularly is quite distinct from the adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. And uh, as uh, patients become more aware of health risk factors of smoking, um, alcohol intake, uh, overall the incidence of squamous cell cancers are declining in the Western world. Uh, and so esophageal squamous cell can uh, cancer is quite rare now in the U.S. and the West. In Asia, esophageal squamous cell cancer is quite common still, particularly in parts of China uh, where it's related to HPV uh, or human papillomavirus uh, and certain, again, dietary uh, you know, exposures such as pickled foods uh, and, and, again, smoking and uh, drinking is alcohol is, are the major risk factors. As I mentioned, in the U.S., it's exceedingly rare now squamous cell of the esophagus and mostly related to smoking, alcohol intake, prior radiation therapy in patients who are survivors from lymphoma or breast cancer. Adenocarcinoma of the esophagus biologically is very similar to the GE junction tumors. And so uh, within the subtype, these are tumors that are uh, targeted together, at least in metastatic uh, uh, trials for uh, locally advanced resectable tumors, their approaches for the operation are slightly different. But again, the distinction is really between squamous and the adenos, and within adenos, esophageal and G-junction tumors, and even uh, proximal stomach tumors all behave similarly. Histologically, within adenocarcinomas, uh, there are uh, different ways that these cells appear under the microscope. And these are the so-called WHO, uh, WHO classifications and the Lorent classification. What we know about adenocarcinomas is there are uh, different um, type of cells that resemble a uh, gland or glandular cell from what the cancer started at the, uh, the mucinous part of the stomach uh, and the G-junction. And the closer the cell still resembles the architecture of a normal gland, the more uh, well or moderately differentiated it is. And so within uh, the HWO class, uh, WHO classification, there is uh, different sort of grades and uh, differentiation. Uh, and uh, the moderately to poorly differentiated cells uh, and also beyond that poorly differentiated with signet ring cell histology. Again, uh, these are more historic classification within pathology. Uh, within metastatic tumors, it may give us a sense of the tumor behavior and their metastatic pattern, but it doesn't really change systemic chemotherapy per se. But again, it's just a, a different way that we used to classify and think about these tumors. Now the field is moving more beyond that, beyond anatomy, beyond just the crude appearance of the cell under the microscope on a h &E slide and into the molecular subtyping, which also uh, falls uh, into this classification, the Laurent classification, nicely. So within G-junction tumors, uh, we further subdivide them. And so the, size, the length of the esophagus in an average human being is approximately 42 centimeters. And beyond that uh, is what G-junction and stomach uh, starts. And so in U.S., actually, the most common subtype of uh, adenocarcinoma of the esophagogastric region are the G-junction tumors. For the G-junction tumors specifically, we are further subdividing them into three different subtypes by the Seward classification. Dr. Seward is a surgeon who developed this classification, and what it helps us is to determine what type of operation the patient needs, and again, it's mostly important for tumors that have not metastasized, as uh, the Seward classification helps us determine where uh, in the G junction the tumor is located. For Seward 1, uh, those are tumors that are proximal to the, uh, closest to the esophagus, uh, and uh, Seward 3 are the tumors that are located at the very bottom of the G junction into the stomach, extending into the stomach, and anything in between is Seward 2, 
Uh, and again, for CWIRD1 and 2 tumors, we tend to approach them as esophageal cancer. And for preoperative uh, uh, treatment, chemoradiation is important to help clear the margins and get rid of the disease completely at the time of surgery. And for CWIRD3 tumors, historically, although chemoradiation can also be applied, we've historically we've applied, we treated them as proximal stomach cancer. And so the type of operation they usually need is a total gastrectomy and they receive pre-op chemotherapy alone.